The amount of nonsense talked about fanfic is truly hilarious. Or deeply annoying. Or possibly both. So let's attempt to have a reasonably productive discussion of fanfic and derivative work in general without hand-wringing about how the end of civilization is nigh because someone wrote a really terrible Captain America Hawkeye slash fic or whatever. My name is Dil Barrup and I love fandom and especially fanfic, which I think makes me a better guide to the subject than the grumpy uncle types who complain about Fifty Shades of Grey while making completely elementary errors about fan culture in their articles. So if this were an essay then I'd start by defining the term fanfic, but we're going to need to go a little bit further back than that. So let's start here. Fanfiction, or fanfic, or fic, is simply a kind of derivative or derived work, which is to say, work which depends on one or more pre-existing works. Fan art and filk and those knitted Captain America dolls you can buy on Etsy are also kinds of derivative work, but for now we're just focusing on the writing. As long as there have been stories, there have been adaptations, sequels, condensations, and what we would now call fix-it-fic, where you know that thing that happened at the end of the story? Well, it didn't actually happen, so let's go off and have some new adventures. When the main transmission vector, as it were, for stories is telling and retelling, someone who has heard a story from their mother or their grandmother or some stranger they met at the market is always going to add flourishes in, take bits out, maybe even change the ending entirely if they didn't like it. Stories used to be held more collectively and more collaboratively, and so derived work was as common as muck. There is nothing new under the sun. For example, you've probably heard of the Iliad. It's a Greek epic poem. It's traditionally ascribed to Homer. It's got Trojan War, Achilles, Helen of Troy. You may remember the sequel better. It's called The Odyssey. But oh man, does Homer's poetry have a lot of derived work. If they were writing now, if Homer were writing now, and if the derivative works were written now, they'd be called fanfic. One of the characters in the Iliad is Aeneas, or Aeneas, depends who you ask. And he is the star of Homer fanboy Virgil's poem at the Aeneid. The Aeneid takes the character of Aeneas and sends him and his friends on an adventure after the Trojan War. Virgil was a fanboy not just before it was cool, but before it was even dorky. Other Homer fanboys include Aeschylus, who wrote a trilogy of plays about Achilles at Troy, Euripides, who wrote a play called Helen, where Helen is replaced before the Trojan War by a double of herself, and so she's not actually responsible for the Trojan War, you guys. You remember how I said fix it fic has always been a thing? Yeah. And Ovid, who wrote Heroides, a series of letters by fictional lovers in which, among others, Penelope from the Odyssey writes to her husband. Modern fanfic based on Homer's work includes James Joyce's Ulysses, Tennyson's Ulysses, W. H. Auden's The Shield of Achilles, and of course, the Coen Brothers film O oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And I should point out that this is very much a truncated list. But fear not, because someone has made an ongoing list of works which are basically fanfic, and we will link to it because I don't know, we're gonna have a bibliography for this episode. Yeah. An important thing to note here is that the Aeneid, and indeed many of the more modern Homer fanfic, are considered classics. It doesn't seem to matter that they're derivative work. No one calls them just fanfic. But perhaps that's not surprising, because derivative works have always been with us, and it's only quite recently in human history that we've come to look down on derived work as somehow intrinsically lesser, rather than judging it on its merits or whether or not we like it. That said, even in the modern day, if it's sufficiently old, it doesn't seem to count. I mean, no one gets snobby about King Arthur, do they? So, do you know the story of King Arthur? Knights of the Round Table, Guinevere plus Lancelot equals sexy fun times, sword from stone, Merlin… no, you don't. Or rather, you can't, because you can't know the story of King Arthur because there isn't just one. There are multiple versions which in many ways contradict each other. Arthurian legends aren't one consistent canon where every story builds on every other story and it's a cohesive whole. Far from it. The stories vary by region, by period of history, by format, by language. English poetry or French prose? Why not both? Prior to the printing press, even when things got written down, unless accuracy was at a real premium. For example, monks copying biblical texts would want to be as accurate as possible, but even then they made errors. Manuscripts which told the same story could still vary wildly, because if you're going to go to all of the trouble of writing something down, you're gonna, you know, 
make some little improvements here and there, right? Stories about King Arthur go back to the 5th century, and anyone who tells you that there is one true legend of King Arthur is either being disingenuous or is just uninformed. Of course, the fact that the Arthurian canon isn't really fixed doesn't stop people getting snooty about it. For example, people were up in arms over the BBC's Merlin because it played fast and loose with the source material, while conveniently ignoring the fact that A, well, yes and no, and B, so did everyone else all the time. Because when people say the legend of King Arthur in the modern day, they tend to mean Le Mort d'Arthur. But it, as you will now be vastly unsurprised to hear, is a derived work in itself, because it is a combination of French and English Arthur legends, plus the introduction of a few new characters which Sir Thomas Mallory seems to have made up himself. They call him T- no, sorry, Gareth. They call him Gareth. And then various other authors like Tennyson built on this set of stories, and yes, it's turtles all the way down. The BBC's Merlin series starts by going back to a rather older version of the legend, that of Bishop Geoffrey of Monmouth, and, in fact, makes Geoffrey a character in the series. Because there is no official canon, no one true set of stories, Arthurian legend to the modern eye looks a bit like a fanfic multiverse, a vast sandbox in which you can take the characters and play with them and recombine them and do whatever you want with them and insert whatever political or religious message you fancy, just because. Actually, the thing it resembles most to me is the Star Wars Expanded Universe. To cut a long story short, too late, derived works have always been with us, and to a modern sensibility, anything from Greek epic poetry to Arthurian legend to Shakespeare can count as fanfic. Yeah, Shakespeare. I mean, we're not gonna get into Shakespeare because this episode is long enough, but Shakespeare borrowed from everywhere. Novels, novellas, poems, history, you name it, Shakespeare nicked it. And frankly, the works where he borrows more heavily from other people's source material tend to be the better ones. I mean, you won't find many people who prefer Love's Labour's Lost to, say, Romeo and Juliet or Hamlet. The other thing to note is that borrowing from antiquity, and indeed other places, persists into the modern day whether people want to acknowledge it or not. The myth of Pygmalion inspired George Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion, though he performed Fix It Fic by not having the statue in the form of Eliza Doolittle fall in love with the sculptor aka Henry Higgins. And then My Fair Lady is a musical alternate universe version of Pygmalion, except that they do have Eliza Doolittle and Henry Higgins fall in love. And then Pretty Woman is a modernized again, non-musical version of My Fair Lady, but with prostitutes. Okay? Okay. But, like I said, things which are based on legends or myth or ancient Greek poetry aren't technically fanfic, because to get fanfic, you have to have copyright. So that's where we're headed next time. As always, thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Jill Bearup. And regardless, I'll see you next time. No, I swear, it's going to be about the history of copyright. It's going to be really interesting.